Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at the FX Impact Mark II Compact, but first up, I'm heading out on an evening hunt to deal with some rabbits that are causing problems in a garden. Right, well the venue for this evening's shoot is a bit more domestic than usual. Um, we're on the, the, a, in a garden that's the grounds of a holiday cabin on one of the farms where I shoot. They've got a few rabbits here and they're causing problems nibbling away at plants in the garden and also chewing the bark off of young tree saplings. Um, so we're hoping to thin them out a bit. Now I wouldn't describe it as fortunate but we're just easing out of the coronavirus lockdown now but people aren't allowed to stay away for the night so it means that there are no residents in the holiday cabin at the moment which is helpful for us because it means nobody's going to be looking out of the window wondering why there's somebody lurking around with a gun. Now because I don't want to talk too much once we've settled into position I will just quickly run through the kit now. Now uh, the rifle I'm using tonight is my uh, Daystate Red Wolf, it's 2 2 calibre, just over 30 foot pounds and this really is my go-to rabbit shooting gun at the moment. Now, uh, the sort of ranges we're going to be shooting over this evening, to be honest, I could get away with sub-12 foot pounds, but with this setup, it hits like a sledgehammer, it shoots flat as a pancake, it's just perfect for the job. Um, I've teamed it with the usual MTC Mamba light scope. That's held on with sports match scope mounts, and I've also got the side shot phone holder set up, so I'm hoping that you will be able to see exactly what I can see through the scope. Um, in terms of tactics, I'm using my absolute favourite rabbit shooting approach. I'm going to be laying down shooting prone and shooting from the stability of a bipod. Now, I can get away with that here because it's a garden. The grass is lovely and short, so I don't need to worry too much about obstructions getting into the way. So it should be fairly straightforward. Let's get cracking and see if we can get a few. Right, well as I said I don't really want to make too much noise now and cause any unnecessary disturbance but I've settled in, it's probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours until nightfall, the sort of time that the rabbits are going to start venturing out to feed and also the shadows are getting nice and long now so I've tucked myself into a shady area just to help with the concealment I've put on the head net and obviously being laid down like this I'm right off of the skyline. Um, I've got a nice arc of fire across the, the lawn that leads towards the holiday cabin um, and I can cover the edge of the paddock and the trackway that leads away and what I'm going to do now so I don't have to mess about when the rabbits venture out is just quickly ping around with the rangefinder as I usually do at the start of this kind of session I'm going to, arrange, I'm going to range obvious markers like posts, plant pots, that kind of thing that will just give me reference points once I know how far away they are when rabbits hopefully come out relatively close to them, I can use those as reference points to let me know how far away they are, rather than having the reach for the rangefinder and move around again. I've done my preparations, so it's now just a case of waiting for the rabbits to put in an appearance. Because of the holiday home, they are used to a fair amount of human disturbance here, and it's not very long before one ventures above ground. Wow, 
what can I say? I think that really goes to show just how effective this setup is. That was about 30 meters and it just snuffed that rabbit out. You, you can't get much more humane with your kills than that. It's quite a breezy evening, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The sound of the wind in the trees will help to mask the noise that we are making, boosting our concealment and hopefully preventing the rabbits from being too skittish. And there's another one. No. That one was a little bit closer than the first one, about 25 metres away, in a bit of a dip between me and the rockery. I could still get onto its head very clearly. It was another really solid headshot and another very clean kill. Waiting it out on your belly can get a bit uncomfortable but it is a great way to keep yourself off the skyline and you don't tend to notice the discomfort as long as the shots keep coming. Another one on the lawn there. That one was just under 30 metres, it was sat up bolt upright but it just didn't know what hit it. Um, yeah, a lot of people make a big fuss about hunting at extreme range with air guns but quite frankly I'd much rather do it like this. Learn a bit of field craft, get in close, make life as easy as you possibly can. Rabbits tend to venture out when the temperature drops towards the end of the day during the summer months. They certainly seem keen to get above ground and tuck into the grass as the light fades this evening. a bit annoying. There was another rabbit out just behind the one that I shot. It's bolted back in. Hopefully it'll come back out now. That one was more like 40 meters. Furthest one of the evening so far and I hope that you'll be able to see from the footage that because this gun shoots so flat I'm not really having to shift around too much in terms of hold over and hold under. I've shot rabbits now this evening from about 25 to about 40 meters. This setup zeroed at around 35 at the moment, which might seem close for an FAC rated air gun, but it just makes really easy work of this kind of shooting. Um, as I say, put another rabbit in then, so hopefully it'll be back out. I hold my position for a long while, in the hope of getting at least one more rabbit. But it seems that they're wising up to the danger, as they're really not interested in coming back out from their burrows now. Right, well we've had a, a very long wait without any activity. The rabbit that I put in after that last shot has stubbornly refused to come back out, as have any others. I'm starting to get pretty uncomfortable here too, so I'm going to call it a night. Um, but I think it's gone well. There aren't a hell of a lot of rabbits here. There are a few, we've helped to thin them out and I'll come back and hopefully account for a few more. Um, now I've mentioned a few times this evening that this is a nice flat shooting setup. 
so I've not had to worry about hold over and hold under. Another thing worth pointing out is the fact that although it's a fairly breezy evening, you may well be able to hear the wind in the trees in the background. Because I'm down so low, the contours of the ground here means that I'm not having to worry about the wind at all. Um, it's very calm at the level where I'm shooting, so I haven't had to aim off left or right either. Um, the great news is that these look like very clean, healthy, pretty much three quarter grown rabbits. They're gonna be great for the pot, so I'm gonna go and get them picked up. An interesting evening out bringing the bunnies to book there. Next up, I'm getting to grips with the diminutive FX Impact Mark II Compact. Check out the great subscription deals for print and digital versions of Airgun Shooter magazine. You won't miss a single issue, even if you can't get to the shops. Bullpup air guns are all about being short and stubby and this one certainly succeeds in that department. Now I thought the original FX Impact Mark II was already pretty short, but this is the compact and it takes the concept to a whole nother level. This is the bronze version in sub 12 foot pounds and its UK retail price is a cool 1,723 pounds. It is fairly pricey, but Swedish gun maker FX has a reputation for making some of the best bullpup air guns in the world. Of course, this one's standout feature is its really compact proportions. It measures just 64 centimeters from end to end and weighs just a shade over 2.7 kilos. Now I'm fairly tall, but it still fits me really comfortably and feels great in the shoulder. Just like the standard Mark II, the compact stock looks very minimalistically designed but still manages to function as a very comfortable handle. Starting towards the back, it's got a really nicely curved cheek piece, which is actually one of the most comfortable that I've encountered on a ballpup. Another nice touch is the adjustable butt pad, which is quick and easy to tweak thanks to the adjustment dial on the side. Moving on to the pistol grip, Again, it looks very minimalistically designed, but it fits a treat and makes for great trigger attack. It's nicely sculpted and has a really grippy textured rubberized finish. Now that minimalistic design of the stock means that the bottle serves as the forend, but on a tactical looking air gun like this, it still works. As I said at the start, this is the bronze version and it looks stunning. The bronze finish around the action works really well with the other black components which have the same flash free matte finish. As with most FX air guns, the standard of finish and engineering look absolutely immaculate. The scope mounting rail is of the Picatinny type which makes for fast and secure scope attachment. There are three other rails for accessory attachment. One on the underside, just beneath and behind the bottle, and one on either side at the rear of the barrel shroud. The chunky little shroud looks really nice, but because it doesn't extend very far beyond the muzzle, it doesn't provide a great deal of sound suppression. Now, it is threaded to accept an extension, or I guess you could fit a longer shroud come silencer from the outset, but the additional length would compromise this little air gun's really compact proportions. Surprisingly, for such a short gun, and thanks to its bullpup configuration, the barrel is still 500 millimeters long, and this air gun comes equipped with the FX Smooth Twist X barrel, which is really quick and easy to swap and change. Now, we actually produced a video last year using the standard FX Impact Mark II just to show you how straightforward that is. Now, that degree of changeability enables you to switch between calibers that now cover everything from 177 to a whopping 0.35 and also includes barrels that are made specifically for firing slugs if you want to use them. 
Another really innovative feature is the high capacity side shot magazine which holds a huge payload of 38 shots in 177 and a still impressive 18 in 0.35. Now it's very straightforward to load. All you do is turn the central dial so you can remove the clear rear plate and then turn the inner cassette all the way around and then drop in the first pellet to hold the spring tension. You then just drop pellets in to fill those remaining bays and when it's full, you simply snap the clear plate back on, turn the dial to lock it in place, and then it simply clips back into the gun. The magazine is driven by a really nice side lever mechanism that takes care of cocking, indexing, and pellet probing. It's silky smooth and really fast, which makes for rapid follow-up shots in the field and the fun of rapid fire plinking on the range. I've put hundreds of shots through this one and it's worked flawlessly. Mechanical triggers on ballpup air guns can tend to feel a bit spongy, but this one is exceptionally good. Just like with the standard Impact Mark II, I don't think that I would be able to tell that it was a ballpup in a blind test. Now both the mechanism and blade are fully adjustable, but I left this one on the factory settings. Straight from the box it felt very positive. It has a fairly heavy first stage, a clear stop, and an extremely crisp let off. There's a switch type safety catch handily positioned just above the trigger. It's easy to access and really simple to flick on and off. The sort of safety catch that quickly becomes instinctive to use. Just like with the standard Mark II, it does make a slight click but it's nothing that's going to compromise stealth. Charging is by means of a quick fill inlet on the underside of the gun. Maximum fill pressure is 250 bar. And although this is a very compact air gun, the shot capacity is still pretty impressive. You can expect over 250 shots at sub 12 foot pounds. Keeping an eye on air pressure is very straightforward thanks to the two gauges. The one on the side shows remaining pressure in the bottle and the one on the underside of the butt section shows your regulator pressure. The impact regulator delivers fantastic shot to shot consistency and variation on this one is about 5 feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now this is a 177 and muzzle energy is 11.5 foot pounds on the highest power setting and of course much higher powered models are also available. All models have a power adjustment dial with lots of different settings. Now in my opinion that's going to be much more useful on the high powered models than on the sub 12s. I think that's just about all of the Impact Mark II Compact's features covered. I'm going to put out a target now and we'll show you what it shoots like. Well, there you go. Now, the, the first thing that I will say is it is a really nice gun to shoot. Lovely, smooth action. Just a real pleasure. Um, that was a five shot group at 30 meters. Got a slight breeze today and I can see through the scope that it had drifted off a little bit and it struck a little bit high, but that's more down to my zeroing than how the gun performed. The important thing is that it was a really tight group. And even in these conditions, it must have been within 10 millimeters from center to center. So certainly no questioning this gun in the accuracy stakes. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not usually a fan of ballpup air guns, but it is very difficult not to really like this one. It is just a great little gun. And it's not just small for a gimmick. It's, it's a really well-made air gun that just happens to also be extremely compact. Um, build quality is excellent and as you've just seen it's also very accurate. If you want a top quality air gun for targeting live quarry and may need something small that's going to handle well in confined spaces then the FX Impact Mark II Compact is going to be extremely difficult to beat. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all we've got time for this week, but as ever we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.